Now, Andre and Deb, we're with you from the auxiliary uh, clubhouse at Camden Yards, where less than an hour ago, manager Brandon Hyde completed his pregame press conference, and this room was buzzing with the anticipation of what lay in front of the Orioles, history that we haven't seen the likes of in decades, and all of a sudden, the entire atmosphere has shifted to one of tragedy as we receive the word of the passing of the great Brooks Robinson. He was nicknamed the human vacuum cleaner. He was such an adroit third baseman, arguably the greatest field positioner player ever to see not only an Orioles uniform, but a Major League Baseball uniform. He was a 15-time All-Star, 16-time Gold Glove winner, and the gold standard of how a man conducts himself when he lives in the spotlight. There has never been a player like Brooks Robinson. There will arguably never be a star like Brooks Robinson as we say goodbye to a man that this town, this game, knew simply by one word, Brooks. Three. Outside of Oriole Park at Camden Yards stands a statue, a moment frozen in time. Brooks Robinson with a gold glove. Brooks Robinson won 16 straight gold gloves as the Orioles' third baseman from 1960 through 1975. Robinson spent 23 seasons in an O's uniform, never playing for any other team. The man known as the human vacuum cleaner helped Baltimore win two World Series. Born in Little Rock, Arkansas on May 18, 1937, Brooks Robinson signed with the Orioles in 1955 for just $4,000. After a few seasons, Robinson emerged as one of the premier players, not only on the Orioles, but in the American League. In 1960, Mr. Oriole earned team MVP honors and made his first of 15 All-Star Game appearances. He also won his first gold glove. I try to catch the ball out in front of me and uh, the short hop is uh, it's an easy play to make I tell you because it, it's just uh, you know if you get there in time if you get there where the ball's going to end up bouncing up in here it'll be tough. Just four years later Robinson won the American League MVP. In 1966 when the Orioles traded for MVP outfielder Frank Robinson Brooks Robinson could have felt threatened by a new superstar in town. Instead he responded by saying Frank was exactly what the Orioles needed. In Frank's first at bat with the Orioles, he got a pinch hit. Brooks followed with a two-run home run. That team would go on to win the first World Series in Orioles history. Both Robinsons homered in the first game of that World Series. Frank won league MVP with Brooks right behind him. The 2-2 to May. Swing ground ball, third base side. Brooks Robinson's got it throwing from foul ground toward first base. It is in time. Perhaps the most memorable play of Brooks' career came in the 1970 World Series when he ranged into deep foul ground to throw out Lee May, a play we still compare others against, like Manny Machado's. Foul territory, long throw! Oh, mercy! I pulled for Manny. I met Manny and J.J. Hardy uh, last year at the Gold Glove Awards. I presented them with a gold glove and uh, enjoyed that. They're great guys. In 1983, Brooks took his spot in the Hall of Fame. His immortal number five sits outside of Camden Yards, as one of only six numbers ever retired by the Orioles. Another statue of Brooks now resides inside of Camden Yards, standing next to his fellow Orioles legends. I just want to say to all you fans here, I don't like to call you fans. I like to call you friends. Robinson swings it to keep the back toward the corner, and it's a homer. Brooks Robinson is survived by his wife, Connie, and four children. Forever the immortal, number five, the all-time gold glover himself. Brooks Robinson was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame as he usually did things in baseball with an impeccable sense of timing. 1983, the last time the Orioles won the World Series. He was 86 years old, and his passing coincides with the Orioles' hopes of their first 100-win season and division title since he was the Orioles' third baseman. Live at Camden Yards, Jerry Sandusky, WBAL, TV 11 News.